This is AP Chemistry lesson for Monday, October 7th. Um, this is a, a continuation of our study of reactions, and this is actually um, really about solutions, aqueous solutions. Um, we're not going to get into a lot of these things. I, I edited this lesson down. So we're really going to talk about solutions and concentration and how they're measured. So an aqueous solution is one in which the solute, such as table salt, is dissolved in a solvent such as water. So aqueous solutions are uh, transparent, which means you can see through them. Most of the solution reactions in nature, such as geology or living organisms, are substances dissolved into water. So um, the three terms to know are solute, and the mnemonic uh, way to remember this is the solute is the smaller of the substances. It's the one that's being dissolved. Um, and solute is a six-letter word. The one that's bigger that there's more of, and you think of salt water, use that as your, just your mental example, is the solvent is the water. That's the thing doing the dissolving. So that's the substance doing the dissolver. It's in, larger, it's a, it's in a larger amount. And that's seven letters long. So it's a longer word. It's the one that there's the more of. Then if you put the two together, you get the biggest word solution. That's eight letters. And that's the solute and the solvent together. So that's called the solution. A solution is a homogeneous mixture, meaning if you took a spoonful of it and dumped it out and then took another spoonful of it, you'd end up with exactly the same composition in both spoonfuls. It, it's uh, not, they're both going to be exactly the same. Homogeneous literally means same type, means that the mixture has the same proportion of substances throughout. A glass of lemonade tastes the same as the next glass because the ratio of solute, that's the lemonade mix, and the solvent, the water, is the same throughout the pitcher. But solutions don't always have to be liquids, although the ones we talk about in class are going to be almost all the time. But um, solutions could be, for example, air is a solution of oxygen and nitrogen. And it has pretty much the same proportion. There's four nitrogen molecules for every one oxygen molecule. Pretty much anywhere you take a sample of air, you're going to find that ratio. Carbonated soda is an aqueous solution, meaning it's, it's made in water, uh, in which carbon dioxide gas <clears throat> is pumped into the water. Vinegar is an aqueous solution of acetic acid mixed into water. A dental filling is a solution of mercury mixed with silver. Um, this is not, however, an aqueous solution. Iodine is a solution of iodine mixed into ethanol, and that's not an aqueous solution. And finally, steel, even though it's solid, it's very hard, is a, is a solution of carbon mixed with iron. And that's, of course, not an aqueous solution either. So, most solutions we deal with um, will, um, will be solutions with a liquid solvent. The solute will be either solid, liquid, or gas. It can be any one, but the solvent is usually going to be a liquid, and it's usually going to be water. Concentration means how much solute do we have in the solution. If you make lemonade with powdered uh, mix, a concentration of the lemonade mix solute will determine how the lemonade tastes. If you want it stronger and sweeter, you can add more lemonade mix, more solute. If you want the lemonade less strong, you can dilute the solution by adding more water, solvent. Okay, here's an, an important relationship, and there is an error here, so I want to correct this. Uh, one cubic centimeter equals one milliliter. That's not true of water. That's true of anything. So I want to scratch that out. There's another uh, relationship that you should know that relates only to water. But a cubic centimeter is a milliliter. They're both measures of volume of how much space something takes up, and they are defined as, as being equal to each other. The one that applies only water is this one is one gram of water equals one milliliter of water. And that's an amazing relationship because what it does is it relates a unit of mass, and I should write only water, it relates a unit of mass to a unit of volume. They, there's no reason why mass and volume should be related to each other. Um, one is how much space something takes up, and one is how, how heavy something is. But for water, one gram is exactly one milliliter, and that's true only of water, not for any other substance. So don't make the mistake of applying that relationship for substances other than water. Okay, let's talk about the ways that concentrations can be measured. The most important by far is molarity. And what that is is moles, and let's add a solute. 
per liter of solution, not of water. Water is the solvent. It's not per liter of water or solvent. It's per liter of solution. That's the mixture of the solute and the solvent together. So it's moles per liter of solution. Um, one problem with molarity is that it is affected by temperature. Um, if the water is frozen, what happens? You maybe put a glass of water in the refrigerator and what happens? It, it, you come back the next morning, the glass is broken. That's because the water expanded. It got bigger. So what that means is a liter of liquid water, if, if you take the same number of molecules of H2O, a liter of liquid water will take up less space than, a li than the same number of molecules of solid water or ice which means that the volume changes. If the volume changes, the molarity is going to change, even though you have the same number of molecules of water and the same number of molecules of solute. The molarity is going to change based on temperature because uh, it will expand or contract. Um, so the same number of water molecules takes up greater volume as ice than it does as liquid, and this means that the molarity of an aqueous solution, one where water is a solvent, will change as water freezes. The next measure, not used nearly as often, is molality, and that's moles per kilogram of solvent. Now, if you took that at previous example, even when water freezes, it doesn't weigh anymore. Even though it expands and takes up more volume, it's still the same number of water molecules, so it doesn't take up, as, so it has the same mass, rather, as a liquid water. So that means that molality will not change based on temperature. You'll still have the same number of moles of solute, you'll still have the same mass of your solvent, even though in, as ice it gets bigger, it's still the same mass. It doesn't weigh anymore, in other words. So therefore, molality is not subject to temperature the way molarity is. Okay, mass percent. We've dealt with this uh, concept. It's the gram, except we dealt with it with relation to specific compounds. Here we're dealing with relation to, with respect to a solution. So grams of solute over grams of solution. Again, be sure you see this as solution, not solvent. Um, times 100%, and that'll give you the mass percent of the grams of solute. Mole fraction. Mole fraction is somewhat similar to mass percent, except it deals with moles, and it's, it's presented as a decimal number or a percent, excuse me, or a fraction, decimal number or a fraction, but not as a percent. So it's the moles of one solute over the moles of all the other solutes and solvents. Um, so it's a ratio or relationship of moles to moles rather than grams to grams. Finally, parts per million is what you use if you have very small concentrations. For example, our drinking water has a poison in it called arsenic, and it's allowed as long as it stays at very, very, very low concentrations, like one part per million or one part per billion. So it's very much like mass percent up here. So it's the grams of the solute over grams of solution, just like mass percent. But instead of multiplying by 100 and putting a percent sign, you multiply by a million and you're going to get, um, that will give you the um, parts per million. You can also have parts per billion in which this number would be, have three more zeros on the end of it, and be parts per billion. So one thing I'm not going to have you do in the exercises. To okay, dilution means to water the solution down. Um, so if, 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 again, if you made your lemonade too strong and you wanted it weaker, it's just too sweet, um, you can dilute it by adding more water. And very simply, it means if your lemonade is twice as strong as you want it to be, it has twice as much molarity as you want it to be, um, you can water it down by adding uh, twice as much water. So instead of one gallon, you make it two gallons, and that'll make it half as sweet as it was before. I'm not going to go into any more of that other than there, it's a way to, it's just a very simple formula, as you can see, um, to reduce the concentration um, or even to increase the concentration of something, um, and it's called dilution. We'll talk about that on another day. Okay, let's continue on with the lesson. Um, quickly go over these definitions. We did these in class. So solute is the substance that's being dissolved. It, between solute and solvent, solute is the smaller of the two. There's less, less of it. Solvent is the larger substance, um, usually a liquid, such as water, that does the dissolving. Solution is the solute and the solvent put together. And the word solvate is a verb. It's a process. It means the process of dissolving. So you could say that um, water solvates um, salt or something something to that effect. So it just means to dissolve. Okay, let's go ahead and get started on the problems here then.
Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to figure out, calculate molarities, figure out how to calculate other things from molarities, as well as some of the other measures of concentration we just talked about. So number five, what is the molarity of 500 milliliters of solution with six moles of KOH? Um, so there's six moles in 500 milliliters. We'll assume this is an aqueous solution of water. So we're looking for molarity. I'm going to draw a line here and put a big M there. That's molarity. But it's not useful to keep molarity in this form. We need to break it down into what it actually is. So molarity is moles of solute, and in this case it's KOH, over liters of solution. That's the water plus the KOH. So don't write water. It's not water. It's the total. If you want to write KOH plus water there, you can do that. But we're just going to call that the solution. It's everything. It's just everything that we're talking about here. Okay, so it says what's the molarity? So we start off with, it's a little tricky. What are you starting off with? 500 milliliters or 6 moles? Well, we're starting off with 6 moles, but we're going to need to use this in the midst of the problem. Okay, so we're going to come over here and we're going to say 6 moles. KOH. Okay. And what we need to have at the end is moles of KOH, because we just defined what molarity was in this case, over liter solution. Well, we've already got moles of KOH, so we don't need to do anything to the top. What we need to do is find out a way to get liters at the bottom. Well, if we don't have it there, we can just place it there. How can we do that? Well, we can use a simple conversion. 1,000 milliliters for every one liter. Isn't that a true statement? If, it, if you didn't know that, we talked about it in class, one liter of anything equals a thousand milliliters of that thing. Okay, so this is a true statement. So I can write one liter over a thousand milliliters or one thousand milliliters over one liter. Well, if these two things are the same, then writing one over the other is equivalent to writing the number one. You wrote a number over itself. If I wrote two over two, that equals one. Fine. If I wrote 43 over 43, that's, that equals one. So I can multiply this by 1. There's nothing illegal about just throwing that expression in there because since it technically is equal to 1, it's fine. I'm, I'm saying 6 moles times 1 is 6 moles, so I haven't changed the value of this here. Okay, but what does it do? It puts liters down on the bottom here. And it should I should be very specific. We're talking about, remember, it could be 1,000 milliliters of anything over 1 liter of anything, but we're interested in the solution, so we're going to put solution here. Okay? So there you go. So I got liters of solution and I got moles of, here of um, KOH. The problem is I now have milliliters of solution on top and I don't want it there because it doesn't appear in my final answer. So how do I get rid of it? Well, here you go, right here. 500 milliliters of solution. So we're going to put that on the bottom. Boom. And there it is. Milliliter solution cancels. Now what goes on the top though? Just put a 1 up there. Since we already have moles of KOH and we want to end up with moles of KOH, we don't want to put anything up here that's going to change anything. So we've got um, so we've got moles of KOH goes to moles of KOH, liter solution, liter solution. The only thing we needed to cancel was milliliters of solution. So now we're ready to go ahead and do the math. And it's going to be, the answer is going to be 12 molar, 12 moles per liter. I can write that over here, 12 moles per liter or it's actually, final answer, you can write it as 12 molar. And molar means the molarity. Okay, let's do 6. All right, so number 6. What is the molarity of 60 grams NaCl dissolved into 400 milliliters of solution? So we're, again, we're looking for molarity. So we're looking for this of the solution. Molarity, I can write S-O-L-N, solution. But again, this doesn't do us any good to leave, to leave it like this. So we're going to write moles of NaCl over liters of solution, which is NaCl plus the water, the water and the salt together. Okay, so we're looking for some number there, equals, and there you go. Boom. All right, 
Now, we're going to start off with 60 grams of NaCl. I'm going to start way over here. Okay, so we can see we have grams of sodium chloride. We need to end up with moles of sodium chloride. So that means we're going to need to have a molar mass conversion. So one mole of NaCl equals uh, 58.44 grams of NaCl. Okay, so we need to have a conversion here, so it's going to be one mole on the top, and it's going to be 58.44 grams on the bottom, and grams cancels with grams there. And so now we've got moles of NaCl, and that's what we want on the top. So we're done with the top. We don't need to do anything else with the top. Now, again, we've got to get liters on the bottom, and we don't have liters anywhere over here. So let's just throw in our automatic 1,000 milliliters. We see we do have 400 milliliters there. So let's put up 1,000 milliliters, and that's a solution over 1 liter, and that's a solution. So we're good here. we got liters of solution, liters of solution. What we have that we don't want is this milliliters of solution on top. I'm going to erase this just to create a little more space for myself. So what we got to do is take that 400 milliliters and put it down on the bottom of a fraction. So let's see if our units cancel, and that's of solution. Milliliter solution, milliliter solution. So the only thing I have left on the bottom is liters of solution. The only thing on the top is moles of NaCl. That's going to give me my molarity. So that works. So again, we're figuring out a, a concentration expressed in molarity, saying that we're, that we're going to put in 60 grams of NaCl into 400 milliliters of water. So now you do the math, and you get 60 times 1 times 1,000 times 1 divided by... 400 divided by 1 divided by 58.44, and the number we get is 2.57. So that's going to be 2.57 moles per liter or molar. All right. Let's go on to the next one. I'm going to simplify this one. Um, I goofed on the units of measure, so I'm going to just make this an easy problem. I'm going to say 80 liters of solution okay. instead of grams of water. It doesn't work, and I won't go into why it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It doesn't. Okay, so what's the question? What is the molarity? Again, we're asking for molarity of 42 grams of graphite, pure carbon dissolved into 80 liters of solution. All right, so what we're, what we're starting, uh, what we're looking for is molarity. So I put a box around that so we don't get confused. I think I can work over here. So moles of carbon per liter of solution, not of the water. Okay? All right, and we're looking for that number. And we're going to start off with 42 grams. I'm going to start way over here, 42 grams of carbon. Of course, we need a molar mass conversion because we've got to go from grams to moles. So grams, so excuse me, one mole of carbon equals 12. 0.01 grams of carbon. Okay, so it's going to be one mole carbon, 12.01 grams of carbon. Grams of carbon cancels with grams of carbon. So now we've got moles of carbon here, and that's what we want over here, so we don't have to do anything else with the top. Again, we got the same situation. We got to get liters on the bottom. Well, I made this one easy. I said we have 80 liters of solution. We're looking for liters of solution. So all I'm going to do very simply is put 1 over 80 liters of solution. That's supposed to say solution. So liters of solution goes to liters of solution. So it's 42 times 1 times 1 divided by 80 divided by 12.01. And that's going to get us to our answer right there.
and that's 0.044. So the answer we can write over here is 0.044 molar. Because technically when we get to the end, we should express it as capital M molar, but in doing the calculation, we should express it this way so we know what we're trying to get to. That we're trying to get to moles on the top from here to there and from liters on the bottom from there to there. But in, in the end of the final answer, if it's a multiple choice test in chemistry, it's going to be expressed like that, like that and not like that. Okay, let's keep going. <clears throat> what is the molarity of an aqueous solution of 32 grams of ammonia in 1.2 liters of solution? This is pretty much the same as the last problem. So again, always pause these. See if you can do them yourself, especially at this point because we've done about four of them now. Um, this is our fourth one. So go ahead and try it, and now I'm going to get started. So we're looking for molarity. So we know that's going to be moles of the solute, which is NH3, over liters of the solution. Okay, and that's what we're trying to find, that right there. All right, we're going to start off with 32 grams of ammonia. So I'll start way over here. Okay, and we need, know we need a molar mass conversion, so it's one mole of NH3. And I think I remember we said in class it's 17.0, uh, nitrogen is 14.01, and hydrogen is 1.01, three of those, so it's going to be 17.04 grams of NH3. So there's your molar mass conversion. So we got to go from grams to moles, so we multiply, put it up a little high so I don't bump into what I got down there. So it's one mole of ammonia over 17.04 grams of ammonia. Grams of ammonia cancels with grams of ammonia there. We have moles of ammonia, that's what we want on top, so we don't change anything else on top. And again, it's the same old, same old. We need liters of solution on the bottom. So it's just going to be 1 over 1.2 liters of solution. And everything cancels properly. Liters of solution goes to there. So now we do the math. 32 times 1 times 1 divided by 1.2 divided by 17.04. And I get 1.56. So 1.56 moles per liter, or down here, 1.56 molar. All right. So again, go over these even a second time if that's what it takes to understand these. These will sink in. It's just lining up units. And once you figure that out, you look at this, these questions say, I have no idea how to figure that out. Well, if you learn how to line up the units, that's the only way that you're going to uh, be able to do this. So learn to do this. Okay, now we're going to prepare solutions. This is often what you're asked to do in a lab. You're going to have to go in and you're going to have to figure out some number of moles, more likely some number of grams, like in number 10. But how many moles of lithium fluoride are required if you want to prepare 600 milliliters of a 2.5 molar solution? Okay, and this is a, this is a pretty typical basic uh, AP level problem that they would give you. So we're looking for moles. So moles over here of lithium fluoride. Okay, over on the left, you, you want to create a 2.5 molar. So the problem in a way seems backwards. You want to end up with a 2.5 moles. What does molar mean? Moles of lithium fluoride over liters of solution, the entire solution. That's what molar means. All right? So what you want to do is you want to know how many moles, this number, it takes to give you this in the end. But when we're working the problem, we're working backwards. We're starting with what we desire, and this is how preparation of solution usually works. What you desire to have, you desire to have a 2.5 molar solution of lithium fluoride, and you work your way back to how, how much of this chemical do I need to go into the chemical room, um, into the storage room, and get off the shelf in order to make this. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's just get the units to cancel. First of all, moles of lithium fluoride 
is already there, so we don't need to do anything to the top. So what are we going to do? We're going to do the same thing we've been doing. We're going to take our basic conversion of 1,000 milliliters of solution for every one liter of solution. Remember, that's equal to the number one. If that's not clear to you, kind of think about that. If these two things are equal, then that means that it's the same number over itself. Whatever that number would be, it's the same, same quantity over itself. That's going to be 1. So all you're doing is multiplying this by 1. Well, that's legal. You can do that. Multiply anything by 1. Okay, so what did we do? Um, oops, I got it upside down. Okay, so here we are. Okay, so the next step, as I say, the top and the top match. So now we've got to get rid of the bottom. We don't have anything on the bottom over here. It's just moles of lithium fluoride. So we've got to get these liters to disappear. So how do we do that? Well, we just use the same conversion we've used before, that one liter of solution for every 1,000 milliliters of solution. So these two things are equal. These terms are equal. If they're equal, then anything over itself equals 1. And 1 times this equals this. So that's perfectly legal to stick a 1 into the equation just for the heck of it. But you're not doing it for the heck of it. But my point is, this is legal to put that in there. So now we have, we got liters of solution to cancel with liters of solution. But now we don't want milliliters of solution on the bottom. We don't have it over here. So that's where this 600 comes in. So we multiply by 600 milliliters of solution. Liters of milliliter solution cancels milliliter solution. And all we have left, the last man standing, is moles of LIF. So now we're going to multiply 2.5 times 1 <clears throat> times uh, 600. That's going to give you 1,500 divided by 1,000. And so your answer is going to be 1.5. So there's your answer, 1.5 moles of lithium fluoride. <clears throat> okay, next one. Let's keep doing these. Just keep practicing these until they become really natural. The next one is the same thing except one additional step. You're going to have to convert grams to moles. So this is a more realistic preparation. So how many grams? So right away, we can come way down here. How many grams of magnesium oxide? Grams of magnesium oxide. So that's our question mark. That's what we're trying to find. Are required to prepare 432 milliliters of 3 molar solution. We come way over here, and it's 3 molar, but what does that mean? It means 3 moles of MgO per 1 liter of the solution, which is MgO plus water. That's what we mean by solution. Okay. So, the first, let's take care of the top. The top doesn't match in this case. It's moles and grams. So, now we have to have our molar mass conversion between magnesium oxide Okay, and that's 40.31 grams of magnesium oxide. So, we come up here We've got to get moles to go away and grams to appear because it's in our final answer. That means the grams are going to go on top. And one mole on the bottom. It's a molar mass, so it's a single mole, all this. Okay, moles of MgO cancels moles of MgO. Okay, so now we've got grams of MgO. If we multiply these, we got grams of MgO. But the thing is, we got this liter down at the bottom. We want to get rid of it. So we use the same conversion we used last time. One liter of solution for every 1,000 milliliters of solution. <clears throat> So liters of solution cancels with liters of solution. And now I'm going to move this because I didn't leave myself enough space. I always try to leave myself more than enough, but I didn't this time. So again, we're trying to get to grams of MgO. So 
I have this thousand milliliters on the bottom. I want to get rid of milliliters in solution. How do I do it? Where do I find something to do that? Right there. So it's 432 <clears throat> milliliters of solution. That cancels with this guy. And so the only thing left is grams of MgO, which is all I want left. So now we do the math. And that's going to give us 3 times 40.31 times 1 times 432 divided by 1,000. And that gives us 52.2. The 52.2 grams of magnesium oxide is what it would take to prepare that solution that we want to do. And people that work in labs at chemistry departments or companies, they do this type of calculation all the time. So we pull out 52.2 grams out of the jar, and then we go and put the lid back in the jar and put it back. Okay, that's what we need to do what we wanted to do here. Okay, now we're going to do some molality problems. Best thing to do first is realize that molality is small m, and it's equal to moles of solute divided by kilograms of solvent. In most cases, the solvent's going to be water. So it's not solution. So be sure you keep these straight. They're going to be, very, they're going to be a little confusing at first. All right? So what is the molality of 45 grams of NaCl dissolved in um, 200 milliliters of water? So we're looking for que question mark molality. Okay, and again, that's small m. But let's write out what it actually is. It's moles. In this case of NaCl, that's our solvent, solute, excuse me, solute, over 1 kilogram, and our solvent is water, so H2O. Or you can write the word water, it doesn't much matter. Okay, so that's what we're shooting for right there. So let's go way over to the right. What are we starting with here? We're starting with 45 grams of sodium chloride. Okay, we need a molar mass for that. Okay, you can just turn back to the last page, and it's uh, 58.44, so one mole NaCl equals 58.44 grams of NaCl. All right, so we need grams on the bottom to make this cancel out, so we're going to multiply one mole for every 58.44 moles. Excuse me, uh, 58.44 grams of NaCl. Grams cancels with grams of NaCl, we're good. Okay, now we've got moles of NaCl on top, that's what we want. We want kilograms of water on the bottom. And again, I didn't leave myself enough space, so I'm going to create a little more space for myself. So what I'm looking for over here at the end is moles, NaCl, for every liter of water. All right, so we have moles of NaCl. We need liters of water on the bottom. Well, here there's a conversion we know. Um, we, we know this. We've used this already. So... We've got 1,000 milliliters of water, not a, not a solution this time, H2O I could have written, over one liter of water. Again, it's H2O. Okay, so now we got liters of water, liters of H2O, same thing, on the bottom. But we need to get rid of this thousand milliliters, this milliliters of water here. So that's where the 200 milliliters comes in. So we put one over 200 milliliters of H2O. Okay, milliliters of H2O, milliliters of water, same thing. And now we have just liters on the bottom of H2O, and we have moles of NaCl on the top. So we're ready to uh, do our math. So it's 45 times 1 times 1,000 divided by 200 
divided by 1, divided by 58.44, and we get 3.85. So that, the answer is it's a 3.85 molal is the way it's pronounced, small m, solution. And that's your answer. Okay, keep moving. What is the molality of 238 grams of um, sugar dissolved in 683 grams of water? And I gave you the molar mass of sugar there, saved you a little bit of work there, okay? So we're looking for molality. So I'm not going to bother writing small m. I'm just going to write moles of CHO. I'm just going to cheat a little, save myself some writing. Moles of CHO over 1 kilogram of H2O. Okay, so this is really, this is really C6H12O right here, but I'm just being a little lazy there. Okay, there we go. So, and what do we start with? Okay, we, we start with 238 grams. And you got to be, start to gain some experience. Are you looking for this number to start with or this one? Okay, this is one that is a part of the, it's a part of the, um, this part of the equation in here. Okay, it's part of the conversions. But this is what we're starting with. So it's 238 grams CHO, sugar. Okay, the molar mass, so we can go ahead and do that. So there's one mole of that sugar for every 180.18 grams of that sugar. This cancels there and there. So now we have moles of, of the sugar, moles of the sugar, so now we need to take care of the bottom. Where do we find numbers for that? Well, right here. It's grams of water. Um, so let's first of all do this. Um, we're going to say there's 1,000 grams of H2O for every one kilogram. Again, kilo means 1,000 of H2O. All right, so now I have kilograms of H2O on the bottom. I already know that I have moles of, of the sugar on the top. What I got to get rid of is this guy. I don't want these thousand grams there. It doesn't appear in my final answer. So what I'm going to do is do one over this number right here. 683 grams, and that's of H2O. Grams of H2O cancels there and there. So now this guy is left. This guy is left. That's what I want in my final answer. So now I can do the math. So 238 times 1 times 1,000 divided by 683 divided by 180.18, and that gives us 1.93. So the answer is 1.93 m, small m, molality or molo is the way you would say that, 1.93 molo. All right, hopefully these are, you're starting to see some patterns in here. That's what this is all about. Do a lot of these, start to see the patterns and how you line up the units, and eventually they become just like doing 2 plus 2 equals 4. Okay, they become easy. Okay, mass percent. So that's the mass of the solute over the mass of the entire solution, and then you multiply by 100%. So, the question is, what is the mass percent? So, we're looking for a percent. That's going to be our final answer down there. Uh, 56.7 grams of SO2 dissolved into 845 grams of water. So, the way you do this is, it's 56, it's the grams of solute, 56.7 grams of SO2, um, dissolved into 100, 845 grams of water. But remember, the formula for mass percent, that's the solvent. It's not the solute over the solvent, it's the solute over the solution. So what do we have to do? Think about it for a sec. 
we have to take 5, excuse me, 56.7 grams plus the amount of water, 845 grams, and that should be SO2, and that should be H2O. So you add those together, and that equals 50. Since grams is all going to cancel out, I'm just going to drop the units of measure, 56.7 over... 901.7 when you add those two on the bottom. So now you divide that um, 56.7 by 901.7 and you get what you get. Let me erase this and we'll write this at the very end. Okay, what you get is 0.63 Excuse me, 063. Now you got to multiply that by 100%. Forget the percent sign. Never use the percent sign on your calculator. It's absolutely no good if you know how to use percentages. So you're going to just multiply 0 0.63 times 100. And you get 6.3. And now you put the percent sign on it. Okay, and that's your answer. So this solution.